seeing Ross's setup, keeping bees at River Cottage is definitely on the cards. But Ross has told me about a mate of his who has a very different way of keeping bees. G'day, Adrian. G'day, Paul. Welcome, mate. How you going? Good, Good you. Good. Thanks, yeah. Bermagui local Adrian Idice teaches a radical beekeeping philosophy at a land education centre called The Crossing that specialises in learning with flavour. That's a totally, totally different looking hive to anything I've ever seen before. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a different hive, definitely. Um, I don't wear a bee suit. OK. We approach the bees with a, a different attitude. You know, we, we go gently, we don't stir them up, so I think with well, that... If, you, if, you're not, if you're not going to wear one, then I'm comfortable not to wear one. <laughs> I mean, it's a <laughs> bit of a leap of faith. So we'll lift this up. No bees. <laughs> OK, so this is, this is a Kenyan top bar hive. People now are coming back to this more natural, sustainable approach. It's more about the bees, and if we get some honey at the end of the year, then so be it. Yep. So uh, let's get into it, eh? Can't wait, see mate. What, see what they've got for us. So we're knocking on the side door. See, the side of the hive's open now. So still no bees. Still no bees, eh? Now, if that was a normal, <laughs> traditional hive, there'll be bees all over us right now. They'll yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I expected yeah, for yeah, you to yeah. pop that and see bees. Yeah. yeah. The bees in a Kenyan top bar build their brood in the very centre, so even when we open their hive on a cold day, they should stay warm and calm. So I reckon we take see all the bees on there. Oh, wow. Yeah, heaps of honeycomb in there. That's, that's a harvestable honeycomb. What do you reckon? That looks fantastic. Now we've got to get the bees off. <laughs> I'm going to try that's not to Sounds upset like them. it's easier said than done. Are you, are you ready? <laughs> They're going to fly. OK. That's all right, they're just going to buzz around. They're not necessarily going to sting us. If I wasn't standing two feet from this, I wouldn't believe it. We'll brush a couple of these bees off. Just gently. I don't want to agitate them. Adrian's bees are like friends. Or generous neighbours. OK, that looks like a... Uh, wow! ..pretty good honeycomb. <laughs> it's almost like going to a, uh, to a tree, picking an apple, and having a feed. Oh, serious? Mm. Oh, man, have a crack at that. <laughs> Wrap your laughing gear around that, mate. Mm. Mm. How good is that? <laughs> that is the best way to eat honey I I've agree. ever experienced. Nectar of the gods, <laughs> nectar of the gods. Oh. Mm. So uh, let's, uh, let's harvest this baby. Oh. So good. So that's for the next layer. When I put it back in, the bees will, will follow that again. Oh, mm. I can't stop eating this stuff. It drives so me crazy. Good. Oh. Let's close it up and thank the girls. Thank you, girls. Let's go extract some honey and do some cooking. You'll see what happens once I start breaking it up. Oh, I reckon we're going to have a deal of honey in there, you know? Fantastic. Maybe more. Well, I only need a third of a cup. No worries. The bees have inspired me. I want to make my own honeycomb. There's a bit of an Aussie tradition in honeycomb confectionery, and I'm hoping my recipe stacks up. I've got a cup and a half of sugar, a third of a cup of water, and then it's a third of a cup of golden syrup, and the all-important third of a cup of fresh honey. Yeah, I can just pour it straight in. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Everything in the same pot. Turn the heat on. I'm going to bring it up to about 150 degrees. Yeah. Making a bee's knees honeycomb means working on the fragile edge of caramel cookery. And we're getting pretty close, mate. Mm -hmm. I'm just double checking in here because. Oh, yeah. yeah. When the caramel holds together in cold water, it's time to move. Get two tablespoons of bicarb and then uh, watch the magic happen. Whip that up there like that. Oh, look at that. There's magic. That's amazing. And now, that'll probably, judging by the square, that maybe take about 15, 20 minutes to set. Yeah, right. I've got another little special trick in the meantime, <laughs> so... Because you can't have honeycomb 
without it being dipped in delicious chocolate. Oh, have a look at that. That's going to be good. I reckon I'll call this one Kenyan Crunch. You've been very patient there, Adrian. I can sense how much that you want a piece. <laughs> mm. I love the fact that that honey came out of that hive. Straight back Not down long there. Ago, mate. Mm. And now we're eating it. It's something completely different. Yeah. We should probably go share the love a bit. Let's go. For the staff and students of The Crossing, it's their lucky day. Here's the busy worker bees. Who's up for some uh, choc-coated honeycomb? Yeah, like yeah come oh. on around, there's heaps to go around. Looks fantastic. <laughs> what do you reckon it's to be? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys notice a difference in the garden having these bees around? Your fruit trees, oh. I mean, they're laden with fruit. Yeah. And we had masses of grapes, feijoas, finger limes. A huge grapes. increase in our pollination. I'd say triple, nearly. Serious? Nearly yeah. triple. And that's the kind of neighbourly help I could use at River Cottage. Well, here's the bees. Here's the bees. <laughs> the bees. And honeycomb. Yeah, bees. <laughs>